Halloween Kills is finally here. The middle chapter in David Gordon Green's slasher trilogy adds a lot to the mythology around Michael Myers, even expanding the fight against him by having the entire town of Haddonfield, Illinois join in a manhunt to kill the shape once and for all. As the film builds to a huge cliffhanger that will be resolved in the upcoming Halloween Ends, there are multiple reveals and surprises that may leave you scratching your head after the credits roll. That includes a nod to the sixth film in the series, The Curse of Michael Myers, that has the potential to be a huge game changer for the franchise going forward. We spoke to Gordon Green about the ending of the film, what we can expect from Halloween Ends, and more. Michael Myers has haunted this town for 40 years. We're gonna hunt him down and we're gonna put an end to this. Most of the movie deals with Anthony Michael Hall's Tommy Doyle gathering the people of Haddonfield as a mob to hunt Michael down and kill evil once and for all. But just as soon as they find him, we hear Jamie Lee Curtis's Laurie Strode back at the hospital talking about the shape and why he's still alive after he should have burned to death at the end of the previous film. It needs to die. And I'm the one that needs to kill it. This heavily implies that the film no longer treats Michael as just a man in a spooky mask who kills babysitters, but is instead going beyond Dr. Loomis' theory on Michael being evil incarnate and into the curse of Michael Myers' territory. The sixth film in the series reveals Michael was a victim of the Curse of Thorn, a druid curse that possesses a child, forcing them to kill their entire family on Halloween night. It also grants the child superhuman strength and immortality. As in that film, Laurie's explanation does offer for a reason why Michael's able to survive getting shot in the head and stabbed multiple times. But that said, Gordon Green seemingly shuts down this theory. Well, the, the suggestion that he's more than a man is, is uh, a theory that Laurie has. In my own personal concept of Michael that will carry forward uh, as long as I'm involved is that he's, a, uh, he's capable of spectacular things, but not impossible. So, uh, so I don't personally see him as supernatural, but I, I see the, the element of fear that he's created and generated and is exacerbating has transcended the immediate character and, and moved on to a, an entire community. So even if Michael is not supernatural, the idea that he is will spread among the people of Haddonfield. Michael appears to die not once but twice in the film, and both times he's gotten right back up and started killing again, almost as if he's reinvigorated by the shock in people's faces. He cuts down the townsfolk that surround him, killing everyone including Tommy Doyle. Even if Michael is just incredibly resilient but not immortal, the acts of sheer savage from Halloween Kills are enough to turn him into the literal boogeyman in the eyes of the townspeople. This changes the dynamic going into the third film, as there are probably very few who would dare stand up to him now. Forty years ago, the boogeyman came for us. We are the survivors of Michael Myers. Ever since 1981's Halloween 2, Michael Myers' mission in almost every Halloween film has been intrinsically connected to Laurie Strode. But if there's one thing Halloween <clears throat> kills in this movie, it's the idea that Laurie is at the center of the shape's life. Much like The Last Jedi, the film democratizes the story to make it about the entire town rather than a personal vendetta against one person. It's not about you, Frank says to Laurie, explaining that Michael's actions in the previous film were not driven by a desire for revenge against her, but the result of manipulation by Dr. Sartain to chase her. As Frank says, he's just a six-year-old boy with the strength of a man and the mind of an animal. If this film makes one thing very clear, it's that Michael's one and only motivation is to go home, with the window from his sister's room acting as a place of nearly mystical importance to the slasher. He's not personally motivated to kill a person, but he does have a beacon to go home. You know, if, if, um, if you even think about the tagline for the original film, um, it's, it's about a homecoming. There's something drawn, there's, there's, that, there's that stunted growth of a six-year-old boy that was taken from his home and institutionalized and there's something that draws him back home. There's the significance of this place. Indeed, if Michael killing everyone in his path is detached and unemotional, then him killing the couple that moved into the Myers house is as passionate a moment as we've ever seen from The Shape. I waited for him. Get out the wall! Get inside! There is a very dark tone to Halloween Kills, with the villain killing almost every returning character by the end of the film. 
Just as the film expands the struggle against the shape by bringing in the entire town, the ending opens the door for Lori to be at her loneliest and most vulnerable going into Halloween Ends. We asked Gordon Green about which characters from the original films could return for the final chapter in his trilogy. The, our middle chapter is about that community and that expansion of the legacy and, and some return for, for Ends, but Ends is it's got a little less novelty uh, and a little bit more specificity in the emotion of a, of a Laurie Michael connection. The 2018 Halloween focused on the idea that Laurie was isolated from the community following her survival of Michael's attack 40 years earlier, with even her own daughter Karen cut off from her in a sense. Then Halloween Kills rebutted that claim by showing that the entire town of Haddonfield was behind Laurie's stroke and ready to join the fight. Now that the mob was killed, it's hard to imagine anyone would want to face the boogeyman if and when he appears again. As for Lori herself and how Karen's apparent death will impact Lori, Gordon Green will only say that it's going to involve a time jump. Well, we're, we're going to take, take a four-year leap in time and then we'll figure that out. It needs to die. And I'm the one that needs to kill it. For more on Halloween, why not weigh in on whether or not Michael Myers is the greatest movie slasher of all time? And be sure to like and subscribe to IGN wherever you watch.